Adobe Illustrator has finally arrived for the iPad Pro and I am all for it. Let's talk about it. Hey all, I'm Brad of Brave the Woods, and as a professional illustrator, this channel is my way of sharing my process, tools, and advice to anyone who cares to listen. Back in late October, Adobe released a version of its extremely popular vector graphics program, Illustrator, for the iPad Pro. And if you're an illustrator or designer who loves working in vectors but hasn't found a great way to do that on the iPad Pro, then you're in luck. Because I was actually really surprised by this app. It has a lot of great things going for it. Now it isn't perfect and it is a little watered down, but those main tools that you've grown to love on the desktop version of Illustrator, most of those are here included in this app. And it's made it so that I've enjoyed the experience a whole lot more than I thought I would. All right, so let's open up the app. Okay, right off the bat, the interface looks very, very familiar. If you've used any of the other Adobe products like Fresco or Photoshop for the iPad, then you'll notice that this looks all very much the same, uh, which is good. I mean, I always, I'm not really the biggest fan of the interface in general, but I will say I do applaud the consistency because that's really helpful for me when I'm opening up new apps and learning it. I don't have to kind of learn a whole new visual language each time. So that makes it a lot easier. They always have your home section, which allows you to see um, your recent projects. And also if you want to start any new ones, it has a few templates that you can choose from. You also have your work on the cloud if you have a cloud subscription, uh, which is handy. Some learn and discover tabs, which sure we can look at a different time. You also can create a new document down here and you can import and open documents down in this corner. But what I was really excited about, I mean, not as a new feature, but just to see <laughs> was this part that says what's coming to Illustrator and seeing the new features because you'll notice a lot of the things that I say today. I'm going to go through some pros and cons in, in this review and uh, a lot of the cons that I mention. They actually mention here as well as things that they're working on and will be upcoming features. So I'm really excited to see when that comes out. And uh, and of course, if you have to, if you have anything else you want to suggest, you can just add it right on there. All right, so now we're into a project and you can see the workspace interface. It's very simple. You don't have to dive too deep to get into uh, to find tools, which I find very, very helpful. I mean, of course, that comes with the fact that there's just not a ton of tools, not the same amount as the desktop for darn sure. Um, but it does have those core ones that you you would feel you need to call this Illustrator, uh, which is important. One of those things is it needs to have artboards, and this does. You have the ability to make new artboards, alter your artboards, and uh, and organize them how you want. I find that being very, very helpful. You can tap up on the artboard name and then you can adjust them by either moving them, you can change the size, or you can just duplicate them and have another one there um, or just trash it when you're done. But I find that it's really important that we have uh, artboards. That's a really crucial part of Illustrator, but also so is the pen tool. So let's look at the pen tool here. You can't have Illustrator without the pen tool because this is how we like to make our shapes. And if you want to drag it and have your curves and all of a sudden you see your Bezier handles, you need to have those different options there. And I'm really happy that uh, this feels very normal. Um, if you want to move the different Bezier handles, you actually have a tool for that. So I'm going to tap on this tool right here and it allows me to interact with them. So just like in the Illustrator on desktop, I love the option to round off those edges, those different points. So you have that option, but you also have the option if you double tap it to, to, to mess with those, those handles, those Bezier handles. But say you want to work with just one of them. If you want to just work on one side at a time, if I tap this, I can move just one at a time. Same thing over here. Just got to tap it and I'll move one at a time. So this is called your modifier key and I feel like it's a great addition to this app and you have the option to check out what that modifier key does because it does different things for different tools. There's a little question mark up here and you can view touch shortcuts and see all the different things that it does for each tool. Really, really handy. It's pretty intuitive, I find. Um, if I need something done and I'm like, I think I need, it's almost like holding option on the desktop. But um, I'm gonna tap this right here and you'll see there's a little circle in the middle that's filled, but this outside isn't. So this is showing like the main function. Your secondary function is when you slide your finger out a little bit, you'll see that it fills that in and it does a whole new thing. For example, on here, 
If I want to, let's go back to my selection arrow, I want to move this, right? Now if I just tap this, it's going to move it at specific angles. It kind of just locks it into certain angles, which is great. But if I want to move it out a little bit, it duplicates that shape. Really cool. Super fast little things. I love when you have all these little hidden uh, abilities within the app because it doesn't take up more space along the side. Um, and that's really helpful. And you can actually move that modifier key if you're right-handed or left-handed, wherever you like to have it, you can move that around. I find that really, really helpful. Okay, so we also have the pencil tool that I'm not sure we use a ton on the desktop. I know I don't because it's usually pretty awkward <laughs> feeling. It doesn't feel super natural on the desktop experience with a mouse. Um, you can use it with the tablet and it's a little bit better, but for some reason, it just feels so much smoother and nicer here. It actually does a smoothing effect on here uh, to make it so that it feels less jaggedy. Um, just like if you were using Procreate, there's the ability to uh, streamline your brushes. It kind of does that. You even have a little fun a little button right down here that can adjust that smoothing and how many points it actually adds um, while you're drawing, which I find really helpful. So pencil tool equals my favorite function here on the, uh, or my favorite tool, I should say, here on the iPad Pro. It's so, so nice, feels very natural. And then of course you can go through and just tap with that selection arrow, just like you would. You can go through and, and, and alter each individual shape. Another cool thing that I have to tell you is this bit right here, this other part that's, okay, I have two favorites. Pencil first and then this, uh, this ability to just give you all these different little tools right here to mess with an individual shape. So it has a little toolbar down here to mess with the transparency right away. You don't have to go looking down the sides for it. It's all right here and it's just a little slider. Really like that. If this was, if you can go over here, you tap on this, we can convert this to an outline. Then you have the option here to change the thickness all right here within this shape. I love that. I can even organize it, stack it. I can move it to the back or the front and this will work with however many layers you have, uh, but I can alter the order right there just by using the slider. I can move my shape. Sometimes it's hard to move the shape if you were just to tap on it. It works fine here, but sometimes it's really difficult, especially with little shapes. And so having this little button right here makes it so that you can adjust it without accidentally tapping on some part of your shape and messing with like a handle or something. You can also lock that shape. I use that a lot when I'm working in, uh, if you're not working on lots of different layers, you can just lock the individual shape, which is really nice. And then you have, if you have multiple shapes, let's do this. So I'm gonna select multiples at the same time. And then I have the option there to group them. So now they work together as a whole. And if I double tap though, I can dive in to those individual shapes still within that group, just like you would an illustrator on the desktop. And then I can ungroup those if I want. I also have the ability to duplicate them, which I really like, and then trash that shape if I want to. But the nicest part is that they're all right here. I don't have to go looking anywhere else. It's all right here. That's huge. So I actually spent a lot of time playing around in this app, um, doing some illustrations. I did this little fish here and it used a lot of the different tools that I was looking for and wanted to learn about. So uh, this was a really good exercise for me. Like I wanted to make sure that there was masks uh, in here and you could do clipping masks fairly easily. It works exactly the same as it does on desktop. Um, I just put one shape on top of another to kind of sandwich the texture or whatever else I wanted to have inside there clipped. Uh, or masked off and uh, it did that. For example, there's this little icon right here and I can release that and so you can see what I what I have here. But you'll notice that, see there's another shape, there's two of those and I just sandwiched them on top of each other to create that. Oh, if you notice what I'm doing too, there's some gestures that you have on here that are really helpful. Um, if I tap three, it'll redo. If I tap with two, it'll just undo, which is really helpful. And again, you can find more of those gestures all right here. You want to edit points, scrub through things. Other things I noticed when I'm playing around with my lines, you get this, you're kind of limited. You do have some of your main uh, options and properties to work with on your lines. For example, if you go to this little slider icon, down at the bottom, it lets you adjust the stroke a little bit. So you can add 
different corners. Like you can have a rounded off corner. You can have different caps on there. Right now I have a rounded off cap, but you can't change the stroke to be, say, uh, a textured stroke or even a tapered stroke, which drove me a little crazy. I really wanted a tapered stroke here and I don't have that option yet. You don't have much to do there. Just in brushes in general, you just don't have a lot of options. Um, but they did say that's coming, so I'm gonna look forward to that. Your layers panel is really straightforward. If I tap right here, you can see all the different ones. I'm, I'm bad. When I work on Illustrator, I don't use a lot of layers. I just, because I can always adjust, I can always tap and just adjust different, different things on there. I actually just lock different objects within a layer. I'm pretty lazy that way. But if you wanted the option, you can add more layers, um, but you can see them all right in there. Also, just when working, you have the ability to snap to grid or smart guides. That's really nice. You can have a grid right here, which is nice. You can have in the background, or you can take that um, you can take that away right here, and you can also have everything snap to a grid, just however you prefer it. Um, I'm, I'm going to have that turned off right now, but. Another really important thing to me is shape building in the Pathfinder tools. And because when I'm using Illustrator, I like to build with shapes. I like to build my illustrations rather than to draw them. Although that might change a little bit now that we have the pencil tool here. I really like that. Um, but there's some core things that um, you have to have. You have to have that, that um, shape builder tool. And I really, really like how it's done here in the app. I actually like it a little bit better than how it's done on the desktop. So let's say I have a little triangle here. I'm going to deselect that, pick a different color, maybe like a yellow. I'm going to create another shape here. Let's do the circle shape. Constrain it to a perfect circle. And now let's say I wanted to, oops, not create another one. Now let's say I wanted to alter those a little bit. Maybe I wanted to take that chunk out of my, um, out of my triangle. All I have to do is go to my shape builder tool and I even get a preview. It's really nice because sometimes it's hard to remember what that's what it's going to do. And so if I wanted to minus the front, there you go. Now I took that chunk out of there. But what's really cool about this is that it's non-destructive. It doesn't just take that chunk out right away. It does, but it's still its own separate shape. Now, if I wanted to if I wanted to take that out, see even when you look over, you bring that over another shape, it's completely transparent. It's amazing. And you can still alter that, which I love, love, love about this app. Um, and But if I wanted to, I really wanted to just take that out completely and I'm like, I'm done with it forever, then I can just convert it to a path and it's completely gone. Now I can't alter that anymore, which is fine because I had that option before, um, but, I, but I, I don't really see the reason why you need to. If you wanna have that always editable, you can just keep it like that and not convert it to a path, which is really awesome. All right, so moving on, other things that I noticed when I was drawing this is you can't move, you can't rotate your entire artboard or the artwork within the app. You actually have to move the entire iPad, which is a huge oversight to me. Um, luckily, you're doing more shape building, less painting, where it actually, where you know, I, I would typically move my, my artboard over to make it feel more natural and ergonomical. Um, but I don't have to do that as much when I'm shape building, but still, I would like that function um, in the future if they can change that. Okay, another pro though, I will say, is this function right here, rotating things. Now this is one thing that gets kind of, uh, not finicky, but just you just have to, there's a lot more steps involved when you're doing it on the uh, desktop version, but on here it's very simple. Uh, you can tap on this and if you wanna create patterns or just to, to rotate this around, check this out. You just do a radial repeat, and uh, and then you have these little sliders here to adjust the amount of them, or this little guy right here to adjust you know where they all show up, the size, all the things, how close they are to the center. That makes life so much easier. So this is a really fun tool that they've added on here. I really like how it works. It's very, it feels very um, feels very easy to use compared to how you do it on the desktop. Uh, but you can also, if I'm going to go back here, let's go back to just one. I can even uh, turn this into a grid. So you can create patterns really, really quick. And you can move, reveal more. Uh, you can adjust the spacing, all sorts of fun stuff. Um, but that's, that's a really, really neat function. You also, the last one will be able to mirror things. So now if I'm going to draw on here, you can see that it's mirroring what I'm doing, 
very cool. I really like that. And that's so that's one of my that's one of my other. I won't say it's my favorite because I've already said my favorite tools, but I really do like that um, the option to do the mirroring and the radial repeats and and I can see. In the future, I'll be making probably some nice pattern videos because I can see that being really easy to do here in Illustrator. But uh, overall, yeah, I, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this. They have a few of the little things on here. You can add in uh, photos or files or cloud documents. You have a camera option. Um, up here on the top, uh, you can view it as outlines, which is really handy, especially when you got lots of layers going on. Um, and you can go back to that. Over here, uh, you can also export it as a quick PNG, or you have the option to save this as a PSD file uh, or PNG or AI file. So it integrates really easily with those other programs, and you can just send them over there and finish it up or do whatever else you want to do with it um, if, by just converting it to these different formats and exporting it. All right, so the last thing I want to say is if you're buying this by itself and you don't have an Adobe Creative Cloud subscription, it could be kind of expensive. It's $9.99 a month, which is expensive compared to like a Procreate where it's $9.99 one time and you have it. Uh, this is just each month you're going to pay $10. That seems excessive. So that's why I actually have a Creative Cloud subscription because I use enough of their apps on my desktop and on the iPad that it makes it well worth it as a professional illustrator and designer to have access to all of those. So this is not free, I guess, but it's included, so I didn't have to pay for it separately. Um, so that's that's something to take into account. Like I said, the app isn't perfect, but I do have to applaud Adobe for a great start because typically I don't give them very high grades on their apps that come out for the iPad because they just haven't done a great job. I feel like they've been way too watered down. They're lacking essential tools, all that kind of stuff. But for Illustrator here on the iPad Pro, I've been really impressed with the tools that they decided to prioritize and the UI. They've really done a great job on making the UI very functional, very intuitive, and that's been really helpful. But I do have to say, I hope they make the updates that they promised sooner rather than later. There's some little things in there I told you that they bugged me and uh, they're gonna bug a lot of other designers and illustrators if they don't fix those soon. And of course there's gonna be a lot of illustrators who are excited about this app but also you graphic designers out there this is awesome because now you can make icons and logos uh, here on the iPad Pro which is huge. I felt like there's not been great apps for that and uh, and now you have one. Well, I hope you guys found this review helpful. I'm gonna be doing more videos about Illustrator on the iPad here coming up soon. Well, thank you guys so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel and like this video if you enjoyed it, and we'll see you next time.